I'm going to be having lots of fun experimenting with watercolour landscapes using lots of tips and tricks. Let's get started. So there's no drawing involved here, you'll be pleased to know. And I'm painting for my imagination, spritzing this cold pressed 300 grams paper for a full list of all the materials I'm using, colours, colour alternatives. Please see the description below. So I've squeezed out five little dots of watercolour and I'm using a plastic card cut up dabbed into that card and I'm just sort of freely kind of swiping the card onto the damp paper. Some areas are still dry so you get some interesting effects as you can see on the left hand side there. I'm using raw sienna, Daniel Smith's Piemontite Genuine, Payne's Grey, Buff Titanium, Indantherine Blue. You can choose any of your favourite colours and just play. So it's kind of loosely based on a landscape. So I've got sky at the top, fields, and I'm gonna have some water below. So it's divided up into thirds, which really can help you, especially if you're starting out in watercolor. And using the watercolors in this way, you can really sort of experiment and get to know what it does. And I'm spritzing this little mark here that I got a little blob by accident. So I'm just sort of trying to remove it with my flat brush and spritzing it off and it's kind of moving. So never panic. And what I would suggest is when you're starting out sort of painting in this style, use the back of an old painting and experiment or even in your sketchbooks. I love spritzing and tilting, letting the watercolour sort of do its own thing. And I'm, I'm sort of really open to what happens. And at the, at the moment, my sky looks crazy. So I'm sort of using a little bit of the Payne's grey there and some indantherine blue and tilting to try and sort of boss the painting about a bit. So try not to be too fearful, see what happens. My best advice is don't keep going back and forth over things, keep it fresh, keep it loose. If it looks a bit muddy, spritz it off and add some more paint. So I'm spritzing here at the bottom, letting all the paint run down. I've got a little bit of burnt sienna in there with some of the Payne's Grey, adding some more paint now with my plastic card, almost printing with the card to create fields. And this is kind of damp into damp because the tubes, it's literally straight from the tubes onto the wet paper. And of course, I sort of mix the colours on the palette and then apply them to the paper as well. And when you spritz, you mix the colors on the watercolor paper, which I really love. And these may not turn out too well. Sometimes they don't, or you can sort of crop it and find a magical piece, maybe make it into a card. But the best thing I find about this sort of style of painting, it's almost like a warm up before your painting that you when you before you start your painting and it makes you more brave you get that kind of feel for it the timing for it I can't recommend this enough whether you are quite a realistic painting painter or someone who likes this style of painting just enjoy it You can see that I'm using a flat brush to apply some paint. I've decided to add a bit of the raw sienna to those little fields that I've created there, just to see how that goes. I wasn't sure about one of the fields, so I've just lifted off with my paper towel. Remember, you're experimenting. I'm using some cadmium yellow pale here and just applying it damp into damp with that one inch flat brush. I've mixed a little bit of Payne's Grey in there now, and I'm just so, sort of starting to kind of develop the painting because I can sort of see these as fields so I'm painting the greens here damp into wet now with my size 8 brush and just keep experimenting sort of keep your mind open to sort of interesting things that happen 
don't sort of have any preconceived ideas. Think of this as a warm up. You're getting the feel and the timing for watercolour. So I'm adding a little bit of phthalo turquoise here to the right with my size 8 brush, dropping in some water and adding a little bit more yellow at the top there. And again, spritzing and I'm trying to get this bottom part to look like reflections. So I'm letting all the paint run down from above, mixing up a little bit of cerulean now, picking up the puddles with my paper towel sort of controlling it as much as I can but tilting and then swiping that cerulean with my one inch flat brush sort of wet into wet a little bit more of plastic card now on the horizon area here with lots of dark so you've got the dark against the lighter sky there pretty much damp into damp work now and I am mixing the paint on the palette and on the paper I just love it and kind of just dividing up the fields and just sort of seeing what happens printing with that plastic card as well. So I'm just marking the water's edge with the plastic card using a grey. So it kind of divides the water up from the land, mixing up some Payne's grey with a little bit of green. And I'm just going to paint damp into damp on the water's edge some grasses. I'm also going to use this colour to create sort of bushes and small trees to divide up the fields in the landscape there using my size four round brush. And I do try to vary the heights of the bushes to kind of have a little bit of an element of realism or impressionism, because this painting is semi abstract. So I'm adding a little bit of the dark here, damp into damp, dividing up the field here with my size four brush, and just sort of seeing if I can bring this painting to life. And I'm using my plastic card now. I've turned the painting upside down. I'm kind of lifting off or pulling down some of the dark paint that I applied with the plastic card. But also you can also lift off the paint as well. The reason why I use a plastic card is because it really loosens me up. If I use a paintbrush, I tend to tighten up a bit. So turning my painting around the right way again, spritzing the water here just to soften and I've decided to sprinkle some salt onto the damp paint and what that will do it will absorb the paint to create some lovely light textures. Turning the painting upside down again I'm painting trees now with my size four round brush damp into damp and some areas wet on dry. I'm using Payne's Grey with a pinch of burnt sienna. The paint is very, very creamy. I don't want it to run into the sky. I want the paint to stay put. In some areas I'll get soft edges, but they will stay where they are. So they'll look like lovely natural trees and you can just have fun with this. And this adds a little bit of information and detail on the sort of horizon line going into the sky. You can vary the sizes of the trees, make them some small, some tall. I'm using a dry brush technique so there's not much water in the paint there and I'm sort of using the texture of the paper to brush the brush hairs very gently onto the tooth of the paper to create some lovely textures. And what I'm doing now is I've watered down some of that dark paint and I'm spattering on the tree here with my size 4 brush. And you can make this very random and it creates texture and detail just adding a few more sort of grasses and bushes beneath that tree there to add interest. I'm just pulling up the damp paint with my size four brush. I wasn't sure about the spattering here. And as I said earlier, just spritz it away and start again. 
So I'm just adding a few little marks here using my plastic card, kind of pulling up the paint, some of the damp paint or lifting off to create lighter grasses, etc. It's so much fun to do. You can really sort of play around with the plastic card. So I'm spattering again with my size four brush, some of that dark paint, some Payne's Gray there. This time the marks are softer. That's because the paper is now damp because I've spritzed off. So it sort of spreads out and looks like beautiful sort of dark foliage there. Just adding a few more branches, damp into damp with my size four brush with the Payne's Gray. Just adding that detail really brings it to life. Adding some more sort of little branches and trees here, damp into damp. So just finishing off with a few more marks here just to make sense of that spattering. And I've removed the washi tape and here is a close up of the landscape. I just love all that texture. Can't resist all that spattering. Love those windswept trees to the left there as well. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it inspires you to experiment, not just in landscape painting, but in flowers and seascapes, etc. If you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches, and you can cancel any time. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.